welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. Um, I'm here every day for the year of 2019 uh, with On This Day in Tudor History events. I'm Claire Ridgway, I'm author of this book, On This Day in Tudor History, which has inspired this series of videos. Now, today I'm taking you back to 1567 and to a rather dastardly deed. For it was on the 10th of February, 1567, that Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, who was the second husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, was murdered at Kirkerfield in Edinburgh, which is in the Royal Mile. And it was just a few hundred yards from Holyrood House where his wife, the Queen, and his baby son, who of course is the future uh, James VI of Scotland, James I of England, where they were staying. Now, 21-year-old Darnley was the son of Lady Margaret Douglas and Matthew Stuart, Earl of Lennox. And he'd married Mary, Queen of Scots, in July 1565. But they, although there was a mutual attraction at the time, they'd very quickly, uh, after the marriage, become estranged. There were problems sort of right from the start. Darnley had expected Mary, as a woman, to submit to him. Uh, he didn't want to just be her sort of king consort. He wanted to rule as king and have the power. But Mary, Queen of Scots, was not willing to cede all the power to him. And so that brought about problems in the marriage. And things got worse when um, Mary's private secretary, David Rizzio, was stabbed to death. I think he was stabbed 56 times, I think it was recorded. Um, he was stabbed by a group of men led by Darnley um, in March 1566. And Mary was pregnant at the time and it happened right in front of her. And she gave birth to their son, James, um, in June of that year. So the marriage uh, went downhill very, very quickly. Now, in early 1567, Darnley was lodging at this property in Kirkerfield while he recovered from uh, what was said to be a bout of smallpox, but uh, is also said to have been a bout of syphilis. Now, while he was resting and convalescing and getting over whatever illness he had, his enemies were filling the cellars of the property with gunpowder. And at 2 a.m. on the 10th of February, 1567, the house was blown to smithereens by a huge explosion. Now, Darnley wasn't killed by the gunpowder exploding the body of Darnley and his groom were found in an orchard by a pear tree in a neighbouring garden. They hadn't been, uh, you know, sort of blown there by the uh, explosion. They, it seems that they'd actually died as a result of strangulation. So whether the explosion was uh, an attempt, uh, you know, to, to cover it all up, um, we don't know. Although... Perhaps it would have been better to have actually put the bodies in the house. But historian Magnus Magnusson believes that Darnley had realised that something was wrong, that he'd heard something and got up and realised what was going on and that he and his servant tried to escape from the house uh, via a first floor window using a chair and a rope but that they'd been intercepted after they'd got out of the house, that they'd been intercepted by their enemies and then murdered. And that's why their bodies were found in the neighbouring garden. Now, Mary, Queen of Scots, um, appeared grief-stricken by her husband's death. She went into 40 days of mourning for her husband. But it was rumoured that she was actually insincere and there were rumours that uh, she was actually uh, implicated in his murder. And her name became linked with one James Hepburn, 4th Earl of Bothwell. And it was rumoured that Bothwell had been the one that had supplied the gunpowder for the explosion. Now, in April 1567, so just... Three months later, the 24th of April, 1567, 
Bothwell and 800 men intercepted Mary while she was travelling to Edinburgh. Um, She was travelling from Linlithgow Palace to Edinburgh. Bothwell told the Queen that he was concerned for her safety because danger was waiting for her in Edinburgh. And he insisted that she shouldn't go to Edinburgh and that he would escort her to his castle at Dunbar for her safety. And it is said that he took Mary hostage at the castle and that he raped her in order to persuade her to uh, marry him. Uh, And in fact, they got married on the 15th of May, 1567. Of course, we don't know the truth of this. Uh, It has been suggested that Mary had fallen in love with Bothwell and that the rape wasn't really a rape. But we can't know. We'll never know the truth of it. In June 1567, so another couple of months later, a silver casket of eight letters two marriage contracts which apparently approved that Mary had agreed to marry uh, Bothwell before his divorce had come through and sort of implicating her in plotting with him and 12 sonnets as well were allegedly found in the position of uh, in the possession sorry of Bothwell now the letters that were in this chest this casket were said to have been written by Mary to Bothwell and one of them was said to implicate Mary in the murder of her husband these letters as they've become known as the casket letters were used as evidence in a commission um, of inquiry that was set up in York and which then moved to London. And this commission took place in 1568 and 1569. Um, into, it was an inquiry into uh, Darnley's uh, murder and whether Mary was implicated in it. The verdict was that it could not be proved that Mary was guilty of any crime. Now, the problem with all of this for historians today is that the casket letters uh, no longer exist. We only have transcripts and translations of them. So it is impossible to know whether these letters that were allegedly found in the possession of Bothwell and allegedly linked, you know, Mary to her, her husband's murder, whether they were real or whether they were forgeries. Now, historian John Guy, in his wonderful book um, on Mary, My Heart is My Own, um, he's of the opinion that uh, they were partially real and partially forged, that old and new pages were sort of spliced together uh, to make up a composite document, which with the aim of convincing Elizabeth's government and Elizabeth herself that Mary had played a part in Darnley's murder. Um, I highly recommend uh, John Guy's book because he goes into these letters, um, the translations of them, what we know about them, in uh, really deep detail. So I recommend his book. And also Antonia Fraser's biography of Mary Queen of Scots as well. Uh, both of those give lots of information on the casket letters and you know this inquiry into Mary and Darnley. So a dastardly deed for you today. A man, Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, second husband of Mary Queen of Scots, was murdered. Um, I'll be back with um, another event tomorrow. Who knows whether that one will be dastardly, but uh, do join me for my next On This Day in Tudor History video. You can subscribe by clicking on that button there and do leave comments. I love reading uh, your feedback and answering questions as well about Tudor history. Any uh, excuse to talk Tudor. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.